Hugo Chavez is without a doubt one of the world's most controversial political leaders and one of Latin America's most popular. Over the past 14 years, he has ushered in a new era of social reform in Venezuela and established himself as a unifying figure in the region. And though he hasn't been seen in public for more than a month, the people of Venezuela poured into the streets last week to show their support for their beloved champion of the poor and downtrodden. But Chavez's critics say that his ambitious promises and overspending on social programs will cast a long shadow in a post-Chavez Venezuela. Poverty in Venezuela has declined by 50% over the past decade. Extreme poverty has seen a 70% drop. And Chavez's many social subsidies have resulted in health care becoming accessible to the majority of the population in Venezuela, while college enrollment has also doubled since 2004. And Chavez has promised to help the poor even more by building two million free homes in the coming years. But his social programs have taken shape in a country that still suffers from regular power outages, a crumbling infrastructure, and one of the highest murder rates in the world. And all of this progress has been financed by an oil boom that experts say is not sustainable, leaving Venezuela's economy in ruin. Venezuela's annual deficit is now one of the highest in the world at nearly 20% of its gross domestic product. The country's total debt has more than doubled since 2008, despite the fact that Venezuela has the largest proven oil reserve in the world. That's more oil than Saudi Arabia, Iran, or Canada, the world's other major oil exporters. And even though Venezuela has exported more than $350 billion worth of oil to the United States during Chavez's time in office, it is now forced to re-import 20% of the crude oil it sells to the U.S. because the country lacks the capacity to refine enough of its own oil to meet demand. As the world waits for scraps of information on the condition of Hugo Chavez, people wonder whether or not he will return to Venezuela for his fourth term as president. The question also remains, what will be his legacy? Joining me now to offer their takes are Ray Walser, a senior policy analyst specializing in Latin America at the Heritage Foundation and a veteran U.S. Foreign Service officer. And from New York City, Eva Gollinger. She's an attorney, newspaper editor, and author. And we want to welcome both of you to the show. Let me, Eva, why don't I start with you? Um, what would you say Chavez has meant for Venezuela? Um, well, Chavez has, has been probably one of the most important presidents that Venezuela has ever had uh, throughout history. He's definitely transformed the nation. Um, I would say that amongst his biggest achievements have been, one, the reduction of poverty in more than 50 percent, which has had a dramatic impact on, on Venezuelan society, on, on Venezuela's economy and political life as well. But m overall, I would say that the biggest sort of achievement and, and mark of, of President Chavez on Venezuela has been uh, his in empowering the people to participate in their political process and bringing back the Venezuelan national identity and, and dignity to the people of Venezuela. So it's a it's a completely changed nation than it was uh, 15 years ago. There's been a collective awakening amongst the people, whether or not they're for Chavez or they're against Chavez. They're participating. They're active. They're aware of their political process and they want to be involved. And I think that definitely this is something that uh, Ugo Chavez has done for his country. Ray, uh, I think that you may disagree with some of what she said, but I, uh, clearly uh, this is a larger than life figure that really has uh, either polarized, I mean, he's really kind of polarized people. People either love the guy or they hate him. What's your take on him? Well, I would, I would agree that he has been a transformational leader. Now, which way the transformation is headed, uh, I would not disagree that uh, the, the official statistics indicate a substantial reduction in poverty. Basically, what he has done is he's become the sort of the, uh, the, the old model of Venezuela was uh, a democracy, uh, but elitist democracy, largely middle class democracy with a marginalized population. Uh, that benefited from the oil wealth of the country. Basically what Chavez has done is taken the oil wealth, has become sort of the redis redistributionist. He has included more people into the, into the economy, lifted the, uh, the numbers up, but has he created a sustainable economic model? And this is, this is where the debate goes on. Poverty reduction, how long can this continue? How much is it related to his capacity to sort of run a petro state? Eva, this really is the criticism of him, and, and some people look at him as a modern-day Robin Hood, uh, but is it sustainable? 
there's no question that the budget uh, that's being used, 60% of the national budget that's being used to invest in social programs is coming from that oil wealth. However, in the near future, uh, I'm talking at least more than 100 years, that oil is not going to dry up. So it will continue to provide that source of income for Venezuela as long as world events remain somewhat as they are today. But certainly there's been um, efforts towards diversification. There's been uh, an ongoing effort to recover the nation's ag agricultural industry, which was abandoned uh, by prior governments, ignored, which is why Venezuela ex imports a large amount, almost 80 percent of their consumer products. That's been slowly changing over the past few years. Um, and then looking to develop other industries, you know, heavy metals, minerals, um, all, all other technological and scientific industries. Let me, so let me give, that's uh, what would be sustainable over let, the long term. Let me give Ray a, a chance to jump in here. The social programs and reform, has it been a little bit too much, a little too irresponsible in your estimation? The challenge, I think, is, again, this whole issue of sustain sustainability. You can transfer wealth to the poor. You can, you can increase their living status. On the other hand, what has happened to agriculture? If my understanding is actually agriculture, their dependence on imported agriculture has increased in the last 14 or so years. Uh, my understanding is that oil has become an even more predominant part of the export earnings. In other words, my take on the Venezuelan economy, as opposed to that of Eva, is they have become, because of mismanagement, because of status policies, because of sort of foreign giveaways, that they basically have become more dependent on the oil rather than diversifying, which uh, uh, is, uh, is, 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 is my take on the Venezuelan economy. What about, what about his brand of socialism? Uh, can it survive Chavez? And I'll start with you, Eva. Well, that's an issue that obviously is being discussed in a lot of media outlets today, and and I would say amongst uh, most Venezuelans as well. Chavez is in a is undergoing a precarious health situation and trying to recover from that. Nonetheless, I think what we've seen throughout this time period has been a collective leadership that's emerged, and I'm not talking just about the people that have worked side by side with Chavez or the individual that he named as his political successor. Should he not be able to continue? But I'm talking about the people in Venezuela the majority of people who have been the grassroots uh, collective base behind this whole transformation process in the country who have been ignored by most major media outlets who are who have been underestimated in terms of their importance of what the actual people who are doing the everyday work in building this new model of what they've called 21st century socialism but really is what has been a transformation of a culture that previously excluded the majority that now not just includes them but it's the people themselves well, who are building and actively implementing their policies. Well, uh, Ray, let me get your thoughts on this. Can it survive? Well, well clearly there, there's a like there will be Chavismo without Chavez. The movement, the ideas that he has launched will continue. The, the question is, is my understanding that there are different sorts of interest groups that, that develop within the party. There will be power rivalries. There is no one that can take the sort of charismatic place. I mean, if you look at these images that you're showing, it, it centers on one particular individual who has established a very unique bond with the Venezuelan people. The men who are coming after him, the Maduros, the Cabellos, uh, the Hawas, are, I don't think they're going to have the same sort of capacity to move, to unify, and I think you're going to see some very serious sorts of challenges in the wake. I mean, yes, the ideas will continue, the misiones will continue, the youth pedavesa will not be privatized anytime soon, but what sort of coherence are we going to see? What, and what sort of budgetary realities uh, that one, one sees out there, uh, economic uh, trouble, you know, storms on the horizon, will the Chavista state without the tiller at the helm be able to weather those storms? It's a good question. And, and uh, Eva, let me ask you this. His regional footprint, how do you view that? Oh, well, I think Chavez has had an enormous impact on Latin America. There's no question about it. He opened the door in the 21st century for progressive leftist governments to come to power throughout the entire region. I mean, today you look at Latin America, the map is completely different than it was at the end of the 20th century. Um, and, and I think that is due to not just 
Chavez and Venezuela and the Bolivarian Revolution, but the attitude that Venezuela has assumed in terms of its own foreign policy. The Chavez administration is focused on a foreign policy that's very um, geared towards regional integration and sovereignty. So they've looked towards their neighbors when before they looked to look, they used to look northward towards the United States. Now they're looking southward and, and amongst themselves. And they've built all kinds of new regional initiatives, multilateral organizations, Union of, of South American Nations, UNASUR, ALBA, the Bolivarian Alliance uh, of Nations, again, the community of uh, Latin American and Caribbean states. I mean, all of these have been uh, really pushed for from Caracas, from President Hugo Chavez. They've created all kinds of new mechanisms, banks of the South, you know, different trade mechanisms that are not based on exploitation and competition, but are based on solidarity and cooperation. And this is something that will remain in Latin America. I don't think there's ever any going back to how it was before when, well, when uh, neoliberalism was predominant and the type of exploitation we saw with, with international financial organizations run, ran the show. That's never well, going to happen let's, again. Uh, let's give Ray a chance to jump in here. Uh, we got his entire resume from Eva. I think uh, your thoughts uh, on his regional football. Well, I think Brazil, for example, might take, uh, I think Lula da Silva and the others might take uh, a sort of a bit of uh, umbrage in the fact that Chavez opened the door for the sort of the left uh, to, to sort of enter in, that all of a sudden uh, they discovered social justice and, uh, and the like. I think solidarity and cooperation are great sorts of things, and it's good to talk about how you dislike neoliberalism, but last time I looked, solidarity and cooperation don't trade very well uh, on the international market. Uh, there were a lot of visions and dreams out there that have also sort of faded. Uh, but yes, clearly with uh, UNASUR and other regional organizations, Yes, Chavez has played a part, but I would not call him the, the ultimate leader of this movement. Well, we'll have to leave it there. Ray, Eva, thank you both for joining us. You've given us a lot to think about. Uh, thanks again for coming by the heat. Thank you.